Would you define yourself, would you describe yourself as an alpha male? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. As an alpha male then, the blessing and curse with that, I mean, I certainly found it in my earlier part of my life. Now I'm 37, I'm a bit more grown up and I'm a mm. bit more realistic with myself that I can't do everything, mm -hmm. even if I'm very, very positive about it. So yeah, I do need help. But the blessing and curse being an alpha type male, a leader, CEO, mm -hmm. is knowing the right time to get help. Oh. How do you define that? How do you how do you how do you recognise that those those moments? That, that's a that's a really good um a good question, a good point, right? And for me, people sometimes confuse being alpha with you you're a leader and therefore you have all of the answers and therefore you know everything and therefore you know you don't need anybody else like you you only choose to have people but but you don't need anybody else and i think that's nonsense so as an alpha i'm quite a secure person i i, I know what i'm good at and part of that security is also knowing what i'm not good at and admitting what i'm not good at mm. and i think that's important because because i know what i'm not good at i very rarely if ever get exposed in situations where I'm not good at something, right? So, you know, I, I know I'm not good at tapping into people's kind of emotional equity. That's just not my personality. I'm not good at some of the arm round the shoulder management that's sometimes necessary as a leader, as a CEO. Sometimes people need, they need a bit more of emotional leadership, right? I know that's not my strength. So when I have people on the team who need that, I know in my team, I need people who are good at that. And I know well enough to say, so-and-so needs a bit of support, I think this is one for you. You need to go in and do that. The reverse of that is I go do it. I'm clumsy with it because it's not natural to me. I'm not very good at it. And you make the person feel worse because it's not my forte, right? So my alpha and me being good or trying to be good at leading, part of that is my security and individual awareness to make me go, I'm not good at these things. I better go get help or find other people who are, who are good at those. Yeah. So it, it, I'm just trying to take a wild guess here then, yeah? I feel like, show my business partner's not here today, because I feel like you and him have got very, very similar attributes and, and characteristics. Um, both very, very good at business, but maybe there is the other element of it where everyone's obviously got their weak points. Would you say, have you ever been described as a bit emotionless? Yeah, <laughs> a, bit, a bit cold, you know, I, I, I like... I like numbers, I like outcomes, I like results. Processes. I like processes, I like commitment, I like accountability. That's how my world works. But I've got people on my management team who are good at relationships, who are good at conversation. I've got you know, great guy who I work with now is my CFO. He's the guy that will stay in the bar with the team until 3, 4, 5 a.m. and like, they have a great time. Like He's really good at that. I don't, I don't want to do that. So I'm off to bed at 11. But we, we get the team to where we need it to be because we're a, good, we're a good combination. And I never feel exposed because people really like him. Like I don't, feel, I don't feel threatened by the fact they probably like him more than they like me because I know that he's, he's good at being liked. Right? So it, doesn't, it, never, it never bothers me. And I think that is an important part of being a good, a good alpha, not to be threatened by those kind of things but even the strongest alphas even the strongest dominating people you know they um they they can at you know points in their lives feel a bit you know a little bit of anxiety tiny little bit of depression not saying you're depressed but you, you, you kind of have moments like it mm -hmm. do you have you ever gone there and how do you pick yourself back up then all all of the time it's the con it's the when you're obsessed with winning and you're obsessed with the outcome you don't win every time. Right? You don't have. You don't bring home the belt or the gold medal every single time. But you would have been obsessed with it, and maybe it was a six-month, nine-month, twelve-month game, right? In the business world, maybe you were pursuing something for twelve months, and then it it dies. And because of that uh, dominant character and and obsession with winning, yeah, like the day after that, you're or the weeks after that, you're you're on the floor. Over time, Steve, like I've learned. I've, le I've learned the cycle, and this is, like, you never understand this when you're, you never understand. It's hard to understand when you're young. People say, oh, you don't have the experience. Like, you haven't got the experience. And at the time, you're thinking, yeah, but I'm good. I know what I'm doing, so I'll be fine. The benefit of experience is you're running after something for 12 months. In the very back of your mind, you're going, I'm going to win. I might not. And because of experience, you go, if I don't win, I know I'm going to crash the day after. 
And then when you crash the day after, you're, you're saying to yourself, okay, I've lost, I've crashed, but I know I come out of it because I crashed two years ago, I crashed four years ago, I crashed five years ago, and I came out of it. So relax, right, breathe, it, it will be all right, it's just, the, it's just the process. Whereas without experience, you can crash and you start panicking and the world is suddenly a bad place. With experience, you just kind of go, okay, all right, it's gonna be all right, this is what happens, you're going through it probably two weeks, three weeks, and you come, you come out of it. 